we ended the previous lecture with a question, is React a library or is it a framework? And what exactly is React? Let's examine these questions in a bit more detail in this lecture. Let's start out with the very first question. What exactly is React and how is it different from the other uh, frameworks or libraries that we have mentioned in the previous lecture? When you visit the React website, you see it clearly specified right on the front page that React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. Now, again, depending on who you ask, some people tend to call React a library and others tend to call it a framework. Now, um, let's not bother ourselves too much in splitting our hairs over whether it is a framework or a library, but let's concentrate more on what it actually helps us accomplish it is more important for us to understand that rather than worrying about whether it is a framework or a library. The React approach to implementing web applications mm -hmm. is what we are after in this course. So uh, React also states that it uses a declarative approach. Now, that leaves you in a confused state because we saw that frameworks generally tend to use the declarative approach, but in React, the declarative approach used by React as specified on its uh, website says that it makes it easy to create interactive UIs with simple views for each state within your application. And also React takes care of automatically updating the UI and then rendering any changes uh, to the specific components as required on your uh, page. You just heard me mentioning the term component. React indeed is a component-based approach. In a component-based approach, we encapsulate behaviors into small units called components. We will examine components in more detail in the uh, next lesson uh, where it will become more clear to you how and why a component-based approach is useful for implementing our uh, web applications in React. Furthermore, React makes no assumptions about the entire technology stack that you're going to use for implementing your web application. React plays well with any technology stack that you can use behind the scenes. React itself concentrates only on the user interface side of the story and then leaves it up to the application designer to decide how they want to implement the architecture and how they want your application to interact with the backend server. So as we go through this course, we will examine one approach that we use for implementing the entire technology stack, which includes the Flux architecture approach, and in specifically the use of Redux for implementing a state-based storage for our web application, and also the use of Fetch for interacting with our um, backend server. Again, I have mentioned a few terms like Flux, Redux, and Fetch. We will examine these towards the second half of this course. It is obviously useful to examine the history behind the React uh, approach. So to understand where React originated and how it came about to the, uh, the state it is today, uh, React was first designed by Jordan Walk, uh, who was part of the Facebook team. And it was first deployed for Facebook's news feed around 2011. Subsequently, in 2013, React was open sourced at uh, this uh, JS conference um, and React took off um, as an approach for implementing web, web applications from then onwards. React is designed for speed, speed of implementing the application, simplicity and scalability. So the three S's of React and why it has become so popular in the real world. So as we examine React more in this course, 
you will become more and more familiar with why this approach is very suited for implementing web applications. As you enter the React world, you will be bombarded with a lot of vocabulary that is used in the React world. So you will hear people talking about one-way data flow, especially in the context of the Flux architecture. You will often hear people mentioning about JSX. We will examine JSX in the very next lecture and understand what role it plays in developing a React application. We'll hear about components, which we will examine in the next lesson and also in the second module of this course in more detail. And then we'll, uh, we'll hear about the state and how a React component uh, interacts with the state of your application and where you store the state of your application or do you store the state in a specific component We'll also hear about props, a way of passing data between the various components. And also we'll hear about virtual DOM and how is it different from real DOM and why React manipulates the virtual DOM and how the virtual DOM eventually gets incorporated or um, rendered onto the real DOM. And element, the React element, which is the smallest unit of building up a React application, a component being a collection of React elements. Then we'll hear about the Flux and Redux architectures in a bit more detail. Again, as we go along in this course, we will examine these uh, concepts and this terminology in more detail. Uh, again, don't uh, get overwhelmed with the vocabulary that you hear in the React world. If you learn step by step, you will begin to pretty soon get a very good handle on all this vocabulary and you can easily go ahead and impress people by throwing these words at them and trying to impress them about how much you know about React. So this is the jargon that you will end up learning also at the end of this course. Enough of the jargon. Let's go ahead and get our hands dirty by starting to build a full-fledged React application, which will form part of all the exercises as you go through the rest of this course. We will start out with our first exercise where we will install the Create React app, which we will use to scaffold out our very first React application in the first exercise. And then we will start building upon this application throughout the remaining exercises of this course.